All right, so having looked at some of Truman's domestic policies, let's see what effect they had on him as he goes into a re-election year in 1948. So the election of 1948 is going to see four different candidates run for office. And at least two of those are going to pull directly from Democratic voters. Truman and the Democrats uh, will strive to revive and expand the New Deal coalition. And he's going to work to do that uh, through his veto of the Taft-Hartley Act uh, as an attempt to win over labor votes. Uh, his civil rights initiatives will play to winning uh, minority voters, and his recognition of Israel will have a political uh, impact as well in winning over Jewish voters. His progressive program, uh, even though not passed by the Congress, uh, will demonstrate a movement towards, quote, walking out of the shadow of states' rights and into the sunlight of human rights. And the fact that Congress doesn't pass any of the program um, also plays to his advantage uh, a little bit. He can assault the so-called do-nothing Congress for the refusal to pass the fair deal programs, among other things. Now, there's at least two candidates that are trying to pull votes from he, uh, Truman. Excuse me. The first of these is... Strom Thurmond and his states rights or Dixiecrat party uh, as they're often called. This group will be a, uh, a break from the Democratic Party largely among southern delegates to the Democratic Convention. In fact those delegates will walk out of the convention in order to form this new party uh, as a kind of prelude to the permanent break in the Democratic Party along those uh, arguably geographic lines in that sense, um, with the solid South uh, eventually turning solidly Republican uh, later in the 20th century. Uh, in that case, uh, the Democratic Party, uh, since the end of the Civil War, has always, or has come to be, rather, a interesting combination of, of people since the late 19th century uh, and the early 20th century with the election of Wilson and the kind of embrace of progressivism in that movement in that direction, particularly by Northern and Western Democrats, we've always had to play this balancing act in the Democratic Party between the more progressive uh, sections of the party based largely in the North and the West of the country and the more conservative pre-Civil War Democrats uh, based largely in the South. And the Dixiecrat Party is going to represent the first real fracture between those old pre-Civil War Southern Democrats and the new sort of 20th century Northern and Western Democrats. Um, the Dixiecrat Party will call for a complete segregation of the races, states' rights, uh, and draw votes largely from people who are alarmed by the various civil rights initiatives under Truman, meager as they were. Another candidate that will seek to draw Democratic voters is Henry Wallace. Henry Wallace, and a, as a progressive party candidate, uh, will seek to draw groups of left-wing critics to Truman. His program is very similar to Truman's. It will involve expansion of social welfare, desegregation, although perhaps even more vigorously than Truman, um, and a de-escalation of the Cold War. Now this is the one place where he's going to differ dramatically from Truman. In his uh, proposal for a de-escalation of the Cold War, he will propose international control of nuclear weapons, and an effort to develop a cooperative relationship with the Soviet Union, ultimately prompting Truman to declare that a vote for Wallace was a vote for Stalin. On the opposite side of the aisle, Thomas Dewey is the Republican candidate. He's uh, somewhat uninspiring. In fact, the book goes so far as to call him colorless. Uh, somewhat complacent and rather vague in his campaign and what he intended to do. Uh, he was, however, the odds-on favorite because the Democratic Party is split between various wings with these other three candidates 
Uh, and so he didn't really put much effort into campaigning. Uh, and in fact, many of the national press uh, assumed that Dewey would win. This rather famous picture down here at the bottom uh, shows the Chicago Daily Tribune kind of jumping the gun, announcing in their uh, headline that Dewey defeats Truman. Um, and here in this picture we have a actually victorious Harry Truman holding up uh, somewhat ironically the newspaper indicating his defeat. In fact, Truman wins the election uh, of 1948 in a upset victory. Uh, Truman campaigned quite aggressively. However, he was still not favored to win, but he won 303 to 189 in the Electoral College, one of the greatest upsets in American political history. And if we look at the map here, we can see how that fell out. You can see the fractures here in the solid south. Uh, with four, at least, southern states going to Strom Thurmond. Uh, the majority still, however, sticking with the Democratic Party, as was tradition. We'll start to see a real fracture, uh, particularly in presidential politics in the 1950s. And with the election of um, Dwight Eisenhower, we'll actually see southern states go for Republicans for the first time. Uh, pretty much since the Republican Party was founded uh, in that sense as well. So that is domestic politics uh, for Truman. We will continue our look at domestic politics, this time looking more at how the Cold War itself is affecting domestic policies in the United States. <laughs>